Hey, hey, Tony Gaskin here, popping in for a little episode with Talks with Tony. Now, we may get two of them up today because this one looks a little short, but um, just like a general question here. And I forgot somebody else asked me to do a question. Speak on a question. Oh, you know what? I answered it in a video, but I didn't get to answer it in a regular video so actually i want to speak on that right now and then i'll do another one on this question which seems pretty simple i haven't read it but the title looks pretty simple now here's the thing right now we what we have going on in, in our society is we have this and i mentioned this but um i'm guessing the person didn't see it is we have this over sexualized society where women are being made out to be you know thoughts and loose booty and everything in the world and so what you have to realize is you cannot get weary in being a good person in being a respectable person the world gonna go crazy it's gonna be a whole lot going on every time you log into the news or like twitter and you see what's trending it's another tragedy that has happened on a mass scale in another city somewhere in the country and it just speaks to the state of the world and where we are and where we're going and you can't lose your morals and your values trying to fit in and so as a woman and even as men, because a lot of a lot of men out on the dating scene and they seeing women and just imagine the men who are a virgin and they trying to date and women thinking that they like men because he's not trying to sleep with her. You know, so it goes both ways, but what you have to understand is that what's for you is for you. And as you continue to work on you and develop yourself, you start to create this space for yourself. You start to get to a place to where you elevate to a higher level and you get to a level to where there's only people that's for you on that level because you have weeded out everybody else. So if you're saving yourself and you're not willing to, you know, sleep around threesomes, foursomes and go to strip clubs and do all these this stuff these favors in the bedroom you're not willing to do all that you want a real relationship you want a real commitment you want to be courted you want to date you want to be exclusive official then you want to get engaged you want to get married then you want to move in together then you want to have children that's exactly what you can do and see this is what you have to understand is when you become that type of person that's not going to be a whole lot of people because when you ask all your friends and family, most of them are not going to be living the way you're trying to live. And so you have to understand that when you go to a level of excellence and a level of greatness and a level of discipline, there's not going to be a lot of people on that level. And you have to be okay with that. And you got to understand that, hey, you know, well, much is given, much is required. Like they say, it, it's lonely at the top. And then people who never been to the top of their game in any area of life say, oh, no, it ain't lonely at the top. Or no, it ain't got to be lonely at the top. If you take people with you, listen, it's going to be lonely at the top. <laughs> it's going to be lonely at the top because how many people could climb Mount Everest? If you climb Mount Everest, I ain't climbed Mount Everest. You see what I mean? That's where... The saying comes from, and if it didn't, I just made it come from that. It's going to be lonely at the top because everybody is not going to have the mindset. Everybody's not going to have the strength, the dedication, the commitment, the sacrifice, the willpower, the desire to climb, to overcome all of the temptation to give up, to give in. Everybody ain't going to be able to make it. Everybody's not going to be able to make it. So it's like this right here. As a man, I chose not to curse. And I choose not to curse as a form of discipline, as a form of sacrifice to help me have discipline and sacrifice in other areas of my life. Because if I curse, then I become less sensitive to my behavior. I learned that from Zig Ziglar. 
I then become less sensitive to my behavior. So if I'm willing to curse, then I may be willing to curse like a sailor. And if I'm willing to curse like a sailor, if I'm if I'm less sensitive to my behavior, then that means I may be willing to steal. I may be willing to lie. I may be willing to cheat. I may be willing to smoke. I may be willing to get drunk. I may be willing to do other things that could hinder and harm me. And, and so I chose not to even curse. So there's one thing that I have not found in my dealings is I have not really met many men. I probably could count on one hand of how many men I've met that don't curse. And when I say don't curse, I mean, of course, the, the, the really foul words. But then I, I break it on down. You know, when somebody say, man, I'm peed off. And they say that P word that is also used for when you urinate. I don't even say that word. As a black man who come from nothing, who come, who done been out there in the streets, the N word. I don't use the N word. You see what I mean? And so, in word, so even words that we don't see, like my, my partner, he from the island. They say, he say the D word. He used the D word, you know, like the curse word for the other word, what, what the beavers, I think the beavers build to block the water. He used the D word. I don't use the D word. But he say in his language, you know, he Bayesian, Barbados, he say to him, that ain't no curse word. And I'm like, all right, okay, that's cool. You know, and then, you know, using the H word, where the devil live at. H naw, you know, what the H? I don't use that. And so I took it to where I don't want any foul word coming out of my mouth. And it's just me personally. Now, now I had me some Popeye's chicken last week. So guess what? This man over here who cursed, he may see Popeye's chicken as a absolute blasphemy to his body. You see what I mean? Everybody have their strengths and weaknesses. And so, but when you start to get past those things, now I probably have Popeye's three, four times a year. And it just, and I don't really like the feeling after I eat it, it just be tasting good. And so when you look at this, now like right now, ain't my wife, she got me in the coffee. I was never a coffee person. So now I ain't had ain't on ain't had no coffee today. I, don't, I had no coffee yesterday, if I ain't mistaken. And so sometimes if you had your, if you don't drink a year of coffee, you'll feel a little awkward, have a little headache or something. And so now I'm drinking this with water. Normally I have me a ginger ale with some mango in there and the mango nectar in there with that ginger ale thing be hidden. You hear me? All the way good and but it's sugar and so now i say listen i want to lose me some weight my wife said if you just cut out that mango nectar with that ginger ale and just drink water and not you know be drinking sugary stuff and all that just drink water and not soda and arnold palmer and you know stuff like that juice or whatever just drink water that'll that's a good start that'll help you all right and then get more sleep that'll help you so i said okay all right now so I take and do that. Now, when you start to, let's say you cut out, you cut out cursing. Let's say you cut out sugary drinks. Let's say you walk 30 minutes a day. Before work or after work, you walk 30 minutes a day. I, don't, I see a lot of people walking on their lunch break. I don't, really reckon, I don't really recommend that. Now, if that's your only time you got to walk, go right ahead, but you're getting a little moist. You're working up a little moisture. And in and, and now you finna go sit back in them people's seat with that moisture in you. So I recommend, and you around your co-workers. Now, you don't you don't sweat water. You see what I mean? Your sweat stink too. And you working up a little moisture. And now you're going back around your co-workers. I know you got your secret and your degree up on your arm but still so now you smell sweet musk and so I just recommend walking in the morning 
taking you a shower, then getting dressed for work, going to work, or walking after work. But if you only could work, walk on your lunch break, go right ahead. I used to see women doing that. Put their walking shoes on lunch break and they walk around the, the, the building, walk around sun. Like, are you finna go sit at uh, with all that moisture? Cause you know you worked up a little sweat everywhere. But to each day on. Now see, now you add that 30 minutes. Do you walk 30 minutes a day? Do you exercise 30 minutes a day? See that? So just by adding that 30 minutes a day, guess what? You done cut out 90% of human beings. You done went to the top 10% of human beings just by working out every day. Because I don't work out every day. So now you better than me. You see what I mean? And so you have to understand that when you go, when you start to change and you start to grow and you elevate, it's going to be certain people at that level. So it's kind of like this. If you're a woman, if you're a woman and you go and you, you get knowledge, and knowledge could be in any kind of way. It could be in your trade. It could be in your gifts. It could be a degree. It could be a certification. You go get some knowledge. All right. You get knowledge. Now you're working on your faith, your belief system. You're not overly religious or anything like that, but you have a you have a belief system and you live by that belief system. So if your belief system is the Holy Bible and it says don't fornicate and you don't fornicate, it says don't be a wine bibbler. You're not a wine bibbler. It says don't be a gossiper, a backbiter, a hater, and all of this. You you none of those things. So now you develop your faith. Then let's say you go and you start a you start a business. You form an LLC or you form a, you know, in, uh, incorporation. You get incorporated. It's a nonprofit. You start that right there. Or you write a book or you become a life coach. You become a speaker. You do that. Now, then let's say you say, hey, I need to lose 20 pounds. You know, you go lose that 20 pounds. Now, the stuff lifted. It's sitting right. Everything, you know, you feeling good, you know, and you working on yourself. And you might lose 20 and say, hey, I want to lose another 40. I want to lose another, you know. Now, if you starting out at, you know, 140, I ain't talking to you. You know, I'm talking about if you got a little meat on your bones and you you working it down a little bit by a little bit, five pounds, you know. Guess what? Everything you add, you go to another level. So now, if, let's say, if you don't have a GED, when you get a GED, now... The men without a GED all of a sudden feel like they're not on your level. Let's say you go get a trade. The men without a trade, they all of a sudden don't feel like they're on your level. Let's say you get a degree. Let's say you start a business. Let's say you do anything you do. Ever the men who have not done that, they they feel like you you have surpassed me. Let's say you go in and you get your body right. You know you lose you some weight. You starting to look different, feel different. The men who not doing what they could be doing they're not trying to lose any weight or you know they're letting their body just kind of be what it is and they're not working on themselves now they feel they start to feel unequally yo you know they're not on your level they're like okay well you like to work out you know three times a week five times a week i never work out i'm a couch potato so now you're like eh, you ain't on my level i need milk couch potato you see what i'm saying so now when you say okay i'm gonna abstain until marriage you tell yourself this and now you start to turn down the men who try to sleep with you and you get your man he trying to sleep with you and you turn them down no i'm not ready no i'm not ready no i'm not ready now you elevate to another level because now he's like okay i done dealt with 10 women and uh she's the 10th nine of these women slept with me so now this one woman she won't sleep with me now guess what you the 10 percent. you in the 10 percent and so now, if he cut you off, he go to the next woman, she sleep with him. Next woman, boom, 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 boom. He get to 100 women, 99 of them slept with him when he wanted to sleep with them, and you turned them down. So when I was out there, and this is a prime example, when I was out there, and I was out there and I was looking for a wife, but me being ignorant and not knowing really how to find a wife, 
one of my tests was let me see if she will sleep with me and of course to a woman this is an unfair test because the woman may be horny the woman may be attracted the woman may not feel anything is wrong with a one night stand she may not feel anything is wrong with sleeping with a man before marriage she may feel like abstaining until marriage is unrealistic so she may have a lot of reasons why she'll sleep with a man but for me the way i looked at it as a 20 year old man 21 year old man was this is a, a prize thing that men are chasing and men are seeking. This means a whole lot to men. Men, this all men want for the most part. And then after that comes the brain and you know the body and the character and all of that. But men was chasing that thing. What Lauren Hill? Uh, you know you better watch out. What the Lauren Hill song is? Uh, 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 you remember that song Lauren Hill had? So, them guys only about that thing. That thing. Okay. So, they want that thing. And so, I'm like, so if a woman will give her body away to me, this one I'm thinking as a 20 year old man, that means she don't understand her value and how valued this is by men and that men will go to war for this men will go to the end of the earth for this and that means she don't understand this and if she will do that for me and she don't know me that good then who won't she do it for and if she'll do it for all of these people then what does that mean now see me being ignorant at the time i didn't understand that the same thing it says about her it says about me that that one crossed my mind and i did i did a live one time and i think i i, I can't remember was it was an interview or something like that i was doing a radio or a podcast or something and i had a guy on there and he said the same thing and i said you know i used to do the same thing and women was in an uproar mad with him but that's literally just what men would do and women did not understand that all is fair in love and war like there are no rules like you being judged based on your decisions and your choices and you don't have any say so on how a, a person judges you now you could judge them the same way but the thing is is a lot of times women don't think to judge a man like that like i've never heard a woman say I'm going to try to sleep with this man. And if he sleeps with me, that means he's a no good man and I'm moving on with my life. So a lot of times women don't even think about that. And then here's what it was. Because, see, you can make that decision to keep your legs closed. But it's not just a, you know, end all, be all. It's, it, it has to be a part of a package. So here was the thing. I had dealt with, I remember I got to 79 and I stopped counting women like dates i could have wrote a movie 79 dates and i stopped counting and anything sexual happened i write it down on a little piece of paper i had a little piece of paper i was writing name down real small and i just and i was ripping it out around around it so i had a little piece of paper it was it was shaped probably about like you know a country that i had to rip that and i had all these names on them right and just keeping track because i was keeping score because that was the immature thing that we did as men that's what we was taught that you know that's how we defined ourselves as young men like the more women you get the more of a man you are that was the belief system this me being transparent you know don't don't try to use this against me i'm just telling you the truth of the mindset and anybody who got you know some some sense or have been out there and talk to people of the opposite sex know that this is true if a man if a man has ever told a woman the truth and that's the one thing why a lot of women don't understand when when an honest man shows up a lot of women are just shocked and appalled by the truth of men because of the man law 99.9 percent .9 of men never going to tell what men do and how we think and how we move but i'm doing it to bridge the gap to level the playing field so that we can get on one accord and we can under, better understand each gender so that we can come together work on ourselves work together and then build healthy relationships but if we don't have an understanding of the mindsets then we can't do that so this is what you have to understand 
So here I am, I stopped counting. I probably, I know it probably was another 30, I would say 30, maybe 50 more women, right? Out of those, out of all of those women, it was three women that I recall that would not sleep with me when I wanted to be active, right? And so my wife was one of those women. Now, what was the difference between those three women? Okay, so one woman, she was older than me. She was a decade older than me. And it just, it, I didn't, I didn't like that. You know, a decade older when you're looking for your wife because, you know, the style of dress is different. Um, the, the choice of music is different. It's a whole nother decade. You know what I mean? And so, uh, and she didn't shave her legs. And so I just kind of seen women as, um, you know, pristine you know like a queen in the sense of like present presentation and so she ain't shave her legs and at the time i shaved my legs because i was an athlete and as athletes we shape now baseball players shave their arms swimmers shave their whole body um but football and basketball we typically would shave our legs for the most part some people didn't really grow hair like that but me I was I would have looked like Teen Wolf, so and I got that from my cousin. He used to shave, and he be like, "Man, ain't finna be looking like Teen Wolf." So I'm like, mm, "You got a point." And so we would shave our legs to have more definition in our legs, so that you could see the cuts in our calves look more muscular, look faster, look more athletic, right? And so this is what we were doing. So when I met this lady, to where she had a blanket of hair on her legs, I was like, mm, "This is okay." This a little interesting a little interesting okay and um and then just was kind of you know a little older fashion just a little older fashion was young was in her 30s but just felt a little old fashioned to me and so that was the one thing and and then you know was um a good looking person everybody was good looking the three people everybody was attractive then the, then the other young lady, she was um, she was argumentative. She loved to debate. You say left, she say right. You say up, she say down. You say blue, she say green. And she just loved to argue. And she also, I was probably 170 pounds. And she was shorter than me by maybe four inches. But she probably was my same weight. And so at the time, being a young man now, you know, I was a little nasty. And so me, I kind of had an a, a idea of being able to lift, easily lift, you know, the, the person I'm with. And I kind of was picturing like, okay, if okay, when we get married, I want to be able to carry her down, you know, down the steps to the car. And if I go to lift and throw a bike out or I'm going down those steps and then it get a little and then I'm down the steps and so I just had this idea now come to find out now my wife she was about five seven three quarters five eight you know so me being five nine and a half five ten that was one thing that was like man she a little too tall because she put on heels she got her arm on my shoulder and she she literally would start doing that later and laughing about it. And I'm like, she put on heels, she looking at the crown of my head. And so the, well, the other two, they were shorter. You know, one probably was five, three, five, four. One probably was like, you know, five, 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 you know, something like that, five, six or something. And so here was the thing. As a young man, now you have, okay, it's down to three. But then here was the edge. All of them was like, nope, not not getting that bed. But one wasn't aesthetically exactly what I had in mind, you know, with, with the, the the blanket of hair on legs and a little, little bit more old fashioned. So it was just like a 
compatibility thing. Conversation was cool, attitude was cool, energy was cool. The other one, energy was bad. I'm like, and you'll be arguing all day long. And then my wife, energy was amazing. No, no arguing, no debating. It's like if, if I said something she didn't agree with it, I didn't know it. Uh, because she probably was like, is this a mountain or a molehill? Like, why am I going to say left just because he said right? And so, and then she was more articulate. Uh, great conversation skills. And then all three knew God, had a relationship with God. Uh, my wife was a biomedical science major, you know. So when it looked at earning potential, she had the most. Uh, the older lady was already in her job and that job was going to cap you know that job probably going to cap around 30k you know i would imagine and then the other young lady i couldn't remember what it was but it wasn't nothing you know it could have been like sociology political science you know it wasn't nothing that stuck out to me and then my wife biomedical science so me knowing that was really hard and then my wife was on the track team you know so being an athlete so that for me being an athlete that kind of fit more and so i'm like not only is she an athlete but she a biomedical science major so what that said is ambition and even though i always kind of had an idea now i always joke about being a stay-at-home dad and all that but I i'm a go-getter and you can see by what i produce today you know i'm a go-getter and so i knew i wanted to be in a position where if my wife wanted to be home with the kids in their formative years, you know, the first two, three years that we could have the finances to do that. And so, but just the fact that she was a biomedical science major, it spoke to her ambition, her courage, you know, her dream. And, and then um, everybody, you know, looked, everybody looked good in their own way, you know, everybody on look scale you could be superficial when it comes to looks as as a person you could be like oh well this man or this woman has this this not it, it was all kind of you know up in the air it wasn't that I, I had to go deeper than that and say okay now this beyond looks what about compatibility what about conversation what about energy attitude you know dreams hopes vision and so with my wife it just was the the best fit she two years younger than me but she felt my same age i literally did not know she was two years younger than me until like deep into the conversations because uh, it just her maturity just felt there and whereas the older woman she felt kind of closer to my age like almost more immature than her age and so it, i was able to make that comparison like it felt like more of a grown-up conversation talking to my wife and she two, two and a half years younger than me. And so this is how it happens when in the selection process to where you just have to be the best version of you. And then who is for you, they'll be separated and you'll be separated and you'll meet at your top. And so if you compromise and you say, well, it, the, all these people are sleeping with somebody on the first night or most people sleep with people in the first month first three months first six months but i don't feel that that ain't in me that ain't in my spirit if you compromise and you do what everybody else is doing now you become just like everybody else so if my wife said you know it's typical for women to argue and debate and to go back and forth with a man and try to get him by the Cahoons and squeeze them and just uh, why men love bees so to speak and that's typical so let me do that let me be that way and if she said that she would have changed who she naturally is because she's not confrontational she don't like to debate she don't like to argue she don't like to go back and forth and have no riff so she would have changed who she is and she would have became like the other young lady who was very super debating and then now that would have changed everything she was and then we wouldn't have been a fit because i'm not confrontational i don't want to debate i don't like to debate and argue I, I, now if you got something to talk about yeah we got to talk about it and get on work on through it but i ain't trying to just argue for the sake of arguing 
And some people are like that. They just like to argue for the sake of arguing. They like to disagree for the sake of disagreeing. And so that's what made me the whole package. And now when I looked at my wife, and this is what women have to understand. When I looked at my wife, it was like, I'm, I'm growing up, so, you know, booty's being um, idolized, idealized, you know, fantasized, fetishized. And my wife was more so flat back there. But I got past that because of who she was as a person. And she didn't have like abs, you know, she didn't have abs and she didn't have like this perfectly, you know, flat stomach. Cause you know, you can have a flat stomach and not have abs. And then you got some women have abs. And so she had some friends that had abs. And then you have them friends who is just like, they don't have no stomach and you like, where's your weight going? And then they weight may just go to the uh, glutes. They weight may go to the thighs or just look like the weight just don't go nowhere, you know? And they just, you know, just slim. My wife being Indian and coming up on a lot of rice, you know, um, a lot of carbs, her body, it fills out differently because she got Indian in her blood. And so if you look at how Indians eat and how Indians are shaped when like adult Indian women, like from India, not like Seminole, Cherokee from India. When you see how they shape, they have their uh, Indians build is different than an African's build. So I could see that in my wife's genetics. And then my wife's mom is, is a black Jamaican. Her dad is an Indian Jamaican. Her mom is a black Jamaican, which would essentially be an African Jamaican, you know, coming from Africa. And so her mom is my color, but her mom doesn't have the type of build where her mom is from. Great, great, great grands. It could have been another race in there. You know, her features are a little different and her mom is not built like the African, the type of African genes where they have a big booty. Her mom ain't built like that. Her mom kind of, you know, straight up and down. And so when you take a black person who is not built like what we see, what we known for in the South, and you put that person with an Indian person who is not necessarily built like we known for in the South, and then that, that create this child who she's not gonna be built like, you know, what I grew up around. And so that was hard for me on a superficial level but I had to look deeper than that. And I was 21 years old. So I say that to say, a man has the ability to get beyond his immaturity and to get beyond his preferences and to get beyond his superficiality to see you for who you are if you are authentically being you. You see what I mean? If you're authentically being you, a man could get beyond that and if you're meant for him, y'all are going to be together. But if you change in any way for other people, if you change in any way, now you change who you are. You change who you are and you're changing it because of peer pressure. You're changing it because of what everybody else is doing. And if you do that and you get away from what you believe and what you stand on, and how you feel about yourself, now you're changing the dynamic of who you're going to be with. And, and that's what keeps a lot of people single is because what we have to do is become the best versions of ourselves. So if the best version of yourself as a human is 300 pounds, if that's the best version of you with eating right, working out, sleeping right, if that's the best version of you, that's who you are. That's who you're meant to be. If just it's your build, it's your genetics, it, it could be if you have a health issue, that's who you are. Now, if you take and you go and just get a whole new fake body, the man for you actually would appreciate you as yourself at your best 
then you being Dr. Such and Such is best creation on the table. Because he would say, you know, was this for health reasons? If it wasn't for health reason, if it was for vanity, then why can't you love you? And why can't you do the work that it takes for you to, you know, work with the doctors to get the right, you know, uh, diagnosis, medication, whatever. And then wherever that lands you, why can't you be happy with that? Instead of you looking at this person and being jealous of this person because she's getting praised by this, by these type of men. And he's saying, I'm not that type of man. The type of men that like that type of woman, those type of men cheat. Those type of men lie. Those type of men are superficial and immature. Those type of men are grown boys. He's saying, I'm a real man. I want my woman to be the best of who she is called to be. Who she is meant to be. And if that means five foot, if that means four foot nine, if that means six foot eleven, if that means 300 pounds, if that means 95 pounds, if that means, you know, whatever that may mean, the person for you wants you to be all the way you. Because the man may be the, may be the same thing as you. You might be 4'11 as a woman. This man might be 5'4". So as a man, he getting looked down on by other women. But then you come in at 4'11 and you make him feel tall. You see what I mean? So... But if you go and start hanging upside down from a monkey bar and you're going to get stretched out because you're trying to get to be five, six, now you done change who you are. And now when you meet the man who could have loved you for exactly how God made you, now you somebody else because every day you're walking around in 11 inch heels trying to look tall. And so spraining your ankle and tearing your Achilles trying to look tall. And so you have to think about who am I? What do I represent? What do I want? What do I want to be? And am I okay being me? And it, and the answer need to be yes. And you got to be you. And so I started to think, you know, and I came, I came to a place to where, you know, in my life, I was like, well, man, you know, I'm shaving my legs as an athlete trying to look, trying to look uh, muscular. And my wife, she said to me, she said, I really don't like men shaving their legs. I really don't want no man who legs prickling me when they have growing back in the bed and man legs smoothing in mine. I say, for real? Man, that thing freed me. Why let me, why let me let the hair go? Team Wolf, you hear me? That thing freed me. My wife okay with that. I'm in the South, right? I'm in the South. A lot of my homeboys got full goals. You know, 12 gold teeth. So I had six gold teeth. Two was solid. They was permanent. They was on the bottom. They had two on right there. And then I had four that went up top, but it, it was a plate. It come out. So I had my six gold teeth. And, um, but I was trying to be something I wasn't. Like, I didn't really like the idea of gold teeth, but everybody had them. So that's why I got them. And I think I got them two solids in the bottom in high school. And, uh, cause my auntie, went in on um, the grocery store and she faked like she slipped she slipped but she did it on purpose and when you do that you allowed to call the attorney and the attorney get you ten thousand dollars so she got the first five and when she got the first five she took me her and her son we went to the um place i think i had a i think i was driving so she needed me for a ride so we went to the gold place in um a park called florida and she got six goals she ain't had no teeth on the top she ain't had no teeth on top. She's missing all these teeth here. She had these two outside of here. I think she got those two gold, and then she got four right here. So she got her six goals, and her son, I think she got him. I think he might have got six goals, and then she got me two goals. And um, they told us it's 22 karat gold. I never had any gum disease or any problems with them, anything like that, but you know, hey, I think it was $230 a piece or something like that. So she spent her first five and then the people, they start investigating you to see if you really hurt. And so she'll walk outside and sometimes she'll forget and just be walking and then see somebody. <laughs> and so they hadn't caught her uh, walking regular a couple of times. And so she didn't get that other half. So I ain't get no more gold teeth. And so my wife, she kind of told me, she like, you want to get them goals out your mouth? She started working at a dentist, um, in, a, in a dentist at the office. 
after we had our first son. And I said, yeah, let me, let my, yeah, can they do that? She said, yeah, they'll charge you $50 a tooth to take it off. So I said, all right, yeah. Had, got them took off. The teeth got sawed down, so they had to put like veneers or something like that on top of it. And so that freed me because she really wasn't in the gold. She ain't really like that. And then I remember I had dreads in college. And I know y'all evolved people. Y'all call them locks and all that. We call them dreads, okay? And and we we'll, and we called it wick. Boy, you wick, boy. Ooh, wick, wick, I think was short for wicked. But I don't know. And so, ooh, boy, you wick with it. And so I had some dreads, right? And they were twist up. But then I went to get them twisted. And the young lady twisted them all the wrong way. And they still were baby. They were little. So it turned them into like puffs. They were like little puffs. So then I got them. My mom and sister pulled them out. Then I got braids. And then I have half braids, half plaits. And my hair got kind of long. And so I had them plaits. And I could shake them. You know what I'm saying? On the back. I uh, shake them. I had the front half braided. Last half, back half plaits. And that's how we went our hair. And, um. And then I was about to dread up again. And then my wife, she like, I don't like dread. She like, I don't like dread. I was like, what? You don't like dread? I said, that thing freed me. Come home. All my homeboys, a lot of my homeboys had dreads. Because we in Florida. And so she ain't like dread. So that freed me. So now I get to be, I was able to be lame, soft, Tony. Grow my, grow my, leg, grow my hair out on my legs. Be hairy legged. Take my goals out. Don't got to wear no braids. Don't got to wear no dreads. You know what I'm saying? Don't got to get a bunch of tattoos or sleeve of tattoos. Like, I got some tattoos, but it was just, you know, like little stuff. And I got to be me. So guess what? Had I went and just dreaded it up, had long dreads, like my homeboys, 12 goals, you know, just all the dope boy, everything, I could have missed my wife. You know, had I stuck in that and just tried to conform to be something else, I could have missed my wife. And so by me just being okay with being where I was and and expressing who I wanted to be and what I wanted to be. So when I talked to my wife, I told her I want to be an author. You know, I want to be an author and I want to do this and that. I may want to be a pastor. And I, I shared this stuff with her. And instead of her looking at me like... You kind of lame. I want me a dope boy. Because a lot of, the, a lot of the, the women her age wanted dope boys. Because they wanted to be able to go on shopping sprees. They wanted to have a dude with some money. My wife was okay with me going to work at the grocery store. You know, as a young man. Me going to work for eight fifty an hour. And she didn't want me in the streets. Like, I was in the streets. And... When we got back together, cause we was apart for six months, cause I was, you know, toxic, and we had only been talking like two, three months, and she cut me off. She went back to her ex, I went back to my ex. So I think the ex has played a bigger part. But then when we circled back together six months later, I had been in the streets over them six months, and so I had went back to the streets, cause I had got out of the streets when I first met her the first time around. But I had went back to the streets. Just I think I was really kind of hurt when she left me that was my first time ever in my life a woman breaking up with me i had never had a woman break up with me so again had she compromised and just stayed with me even though she ain't like the way i was questioning her and talking to her had she compromised and just stayed with me she could have lost out on her husband being the man that i am today but she stuck true to her values and she said i'm not finna be with no man who's gonna be insecure jealous and controlled and asking all these questions like i'm his child and she said we need to take a break so had she not done that i wouldn't we wouldn't i wouldn't be here today i wouldn't be here today when we got back together had she not told me hey you got to get out them streets like you gonna have to, if you want to be with me you're gonna have to leave them streets alone had she not told me that 99 percent of other women would not have said that because they like money coming in this the way he know how to make money just the only way he know how to make money i'd rather have money than to be broke i'd rather him be able to pay bills and if this the way he know how to pay bills so be it 
most women was okay with a dude scamming, doing some kind of fraud, selling drugs, robbing. Most women was okay with that. All my sister boyfriends was some kind of scammers, robbers, drug dealers. She was okay with it. Even being raised in a Christian household with my dad as a pastor, she was okay with it. And so I saw this all around me. The other women I talked to when I was in the streets, they was okay with it. It was my wife. She was the only woman that was just adamant against it. So this is why I try to help y'all understand. Don't listen to society talking about it's not realistic to save yourself until marriage. If that's what you want to do. My wife didn't save herself until marriage. I didn't save myself until marriage, but she had other standards and stipulations that she did not compromise. See, sex for her at that time, it wasn't a thing like save yourself until marriage. Now it's becoming more of a thing because there's so many STDs. There's so many people with STDs that, and it's so many life coaches and there's so many relationship coaches and stuff that saving yourself is more of a thing. See, 2007, I don't even know if we had YouTube. I don't recall YouTube when I met my wife and like relationship coaches and stuff like that. So we was just kind of in a lot of ways just living life. And so people always ask, did, did y'all say y'all self? No, that became a movement later. You know, that became a thing. And because even with Christians, it wasn't really being pressed, you know, just because people was okay in sin. But it, when voices started to, to be raised up, like voices of my own, after I learned from my mistakes and started to teach, that's when it became more of a movement of saving yourself. And then, you know, when the 90 day rule became popular, that was kind of like saving yourself, not doing nothing for 90 days at least. And that had never been a stipulation, you know? So when stuff like this started to come in, it became trendy. And me and my wife was already married by then, you know, we already married, we already, you know, and to be honest with you, had she said, I'm saving myself to marriage, I wouldn't care at all. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't have cared at all. And the reason why I wouldn't have cared because, again, that would have made her more rare. And so as a man, when you're looking for your wife, you want the rarest you can find. Like, you don't want no average everyday. What's up? Yeah, yeah. What time you got to go? At 530? So he probably need to be about leaving, huh? He ready? Okay. Uh, I got to do something special. I, I can drive my Sprinter. I got a coaching session at 6. Okay, I'll wrap up. Huh? They open? Oh, okay, all right. You All right. I'll be done in five minutes. Um, I got to forget why I got to take my son to practice. So understand that right now is whoever you want to be, whatever your, your morals, your values are, stick to that. Stick to that. You ain't going to know it all. You ain't going to be perfect. But make sure you don't compromise just for society's sake. If you compromise out of ignorance because you didn't know no better, and that's what I found out about my wife when we talked later, she was like, honestly, I just had never been talked to about that. But as soon as after that happened and she got pregnant, listen, we was married and I was putting on protection. Do you hear me? As a married man, I go to my homeboys and they'd be like, what? You got to wear protection? What? You married, that's your wife. I say, hey, she like that. She like that, boy. When she coming to some knowledge, and so really in the beginning, it just was her ignorance. It wasn't her just trying to compromise. Her mama never talked to her about it. Her daddy never talked to her about it. So she like, you're in a relationship, this one of the things you do, and this how it's done. Of course, she knew of it, but just didn't know like, listen, you need to enforce this. And I know that sound crazy, but that's how it is. A lot of times it got to be laid out to us. It got to be spelled out to us. But once she knew and she felt the repercussions of that decision, she was like, never again, never again. When I get pregnant again, it's going to be intention now. And so I wasn't finna go get snipped. And, you know, sometimes the birth control and all that don't work all the way and or sometimes, if, you know, you in between it or whatever, however it was, it was just certain times, hey, it what it got to be. And I was like, okay. It was hard for me, but, you know, ego-wise, but not literally. The feeling was the same. A lot of men tell, ah, it don't feel the same. No, the feeling was the same. But I said, hey, this her standard. This where she at right now with this. And so this is what it's going to be. And so, you know, we came through that. And 
every standard she set, don't yell at me. Don't come in this house late. Don't do that. Don't do that. Every standard she set, I adhere to it because I realize this woman ain't afraid to leave. This woman here leave. You'll get left fooling around with this woman here. And so, boom, I grew. So, hey, this Tony Gaxon, and this to the men and women who you got standards, you don't want to compromise to society's way and doing it like that. Stay doing what you're doing. And you're just going to be separated for greatness. You're going to be separated for the person that's on your level. And it's going to take longer than the average everyday people. It's going to take longer. It could take longer. It ain't a guarantee it's going to take longer, but it could take longer. And you got to be okay with that. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. We'll talk soon.